seemed a wrong time and place I grew angry when others trashed my race Searching for identity and friends who cared I envisioned a native warrior, tall bear He's a mighty warrior Alito, I'm Adrian Roman, Grand Master of American Indian Weapons they call me Bospo Tusca, which translates the knife warrior in my native Choctaw. American Indian Fighting Arts is a resurrection and historical study of how my native people fought prior to the 1800s. I teach the seven weapons that were unique to the Indians of that era and their application. My system is the only martial arts fighting system that can be traced to North America. Our history is relatively short compared to other countries and cultures. Consequently, the American Indian tribes of North America are overlooked for their tremendous fighting skills. All martial arts studied in the United States today are imported. American Indian Weapons is the only martial arts fighting system that can be traced to North America. In its attempt to destroy the Indian tribes and their culture, the United States was largely successful. The warfare strategies, concepts, and weapons of the American Indians are often forgotten. Fortunately, the techniques of warfare, self-defense, were carried down in oral traditions from father to son. This new information is a must for all martial artists to broaden their knowledge of self-defense. The weapon and knife aficionados will find them equally fascinating because of their speciality. And of course all American Indians will be proud for one of their own to step forward and demand acknowledgement for our fighting skills. I encourage you to practice these techniques for they one day could save your life. Learn to appreciate their source and use them only when necessary. Although the original Indians were not given credit for their contribution to the martial arts world, their warrior spirit survives in the heart of ever American Indian and the discipline of the dedicated students. I trust you will find this system enjoyable, informative, and gain a new appreciation for the American Indian and their culture and the fighting system that is of your country. I have explored and documented the different types of weapons used by the Indian tribes prior to the 1800s. The most common weapon was a bow and arrow, knife, spear, war club, and tomahawk. My people, the Choctaws of southeastern United States, used the blowgun to hunt small game. What we call lacrosse today was largely derived from wrestling techniques used by American Indians. Intertribal warfares were often conducted in night raids requiring close hand-to-hand -hand combat. My initial emphasis in American Indian fighting system has been focused on the knife. The knife was a working tool that hung from the waist of every warrior's belt and was even used by the women to prepare clothing and the meals. In addition, it's the weapon that is most commonly encountered in our lives today. If you are attacked, there's a 70% chance your assailant will use a knife. And most people fear a knife more than a gun and are easily frightened into immobility. Healthy fear is certainly justified, but need not immobilize you. There is always an option for defense if you remember four basic principles and learn some sound techniques. And self-defense, your success is enhanced if you increase your speed, agility, and coordination. The techniques I share with you today are good for exercise purposes to improve those basic health factors as well as actual use in the event you are attacked with a knife. In the techniques I discuss in this tapes and those that I teach in my studio, we always begin with interception. You will want to run away from the knife instinctively. However, if running was an option, you would not be facing the assailant. Instead, perhaps you are hemmed in by tight space, lack of light in a poorly lit parking lot, surrounded by friends of the attacker, or a mydred of other obstacles. And since you cannot run away, you must do something that is counterintuitively. You must move towards the knife. Use parries rather than blocks. We all learn to block punches, but missing a block by a fraction of an inch could get your arm slashed. Kicking the knife out of the attacker's hand is also not an option. 
Try it with an adversary rather than a cooperative opponent, and I think you will find it almost impossible to accomplish. Eventually, you will find yourself with a cut leg, and all martial artists know that a cut to the veins or the arteries of the leg can be fatal. You have to have control of the weapon, and that means intercepting it first. Most assailants concentrate on stabbing, slashing, and maintaining control of their weapon. Once you have control of the hand holding the knife, you have accomplished the key objective and set up the next two elements of the defense. Until you learn to control the weapon, the rest of the techniques will be largely ineffective. Your control may be for a fraction of a second, especially against a stronger opponent. So your control must flow quickly into a disarm or a distraction move prior to the disarm. There are several types of disarms. One is to strip the knife out of your opponent's hand and you control the knife. Two is to knock the weapon out of his hands. There are some other exotic disarms of which we will see in future tapes. So as we're posturing here, and he's, we're trying to, I want it in the left hand, Rich. Uh, let's get, move over here. What I want to do is I want to defend the knife first. So I want to, I want to knock the knife away, but I want, to, I want to do a distraction motion to his body. And so I want to knock the knife away, distraction motion, and, then, and control the knife here. So if the knife can, the camera can see this, I've got control of the knife right here. Then I'm going to slip around here and then come over here and do a hip throw and take the man down. Okay. So, so let's do it from this angle here. So again, knife distraction, grab, and then take him down. Now I'm going to take him down from this other angle over here, so we can camera you see. Okay, so here, here, and take him down. Okay. Now, when I got the got him down here, the first, number one thing is I want to disarm the knife here. So I want to slide my knee up under his, his elbow joint right here and have him drop the knife with an arm bar here. Now, if he didn't have the knife, I would just disregard this and I would turn loose the hand here and just pound him four or five times here until he got he quit. Now, I can take the wrist here and slide it this way, come up underneath, and and I got a wrist lock from the back side and roll him around him and lock him out. And that's Talahina. Talahina is a Choctaw word that means uh, iron path. It's also my birthplace. So I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Centulo, rattlesnake. Rich, come on in. <clears throat> All right, um, this is the technique against a two-handed push. So uh, let's have this angle right here, Rich. So as he comes in with the two-handed push, I want to step away from him and create an angle right here. I'm going to knock that arm down right here, okay? Notice I'm in some of a neutral bow here. So as he comes in, hammer it down. I want to shuffle forward and shoot a thumb into the eye with a heel palm, okay? Then I want, to, I want to find the wrist, it's important. Once I find this wrist from here, his hand now goes up here, takes the left hand out of play, I'm free to do an arm bar, and just take him down, the knee, anything I want to do there. Suntulo, the rattlesnake, and this is the, this is the snake bite, the thumb in the, in, the, in the eye. So again, there it is, and the arm bar, and I can take him on down here if I like, and just lock him out, okay? That's Sintulo. Okay, war dance. This is a right knife thrust to the midsection, okay? Now, as he comes in, he's coming down the center line. I've got a tape right here. So I want to step off the center line and do a wrist grab here. I want to turn the blade away from me in case it's sharp right here. Now, this is actually a weak position because I know that he can pull out of this, okay? This is actually, if you're talking about weights, this is a positive motion and this is a, my motion here is a negative motion. Generally, each time a positive motion will always outweigh or outwin over a negative motion. 
But I know this, and I can anticipate this. So as he pulls away or thinks about pulling away, I'm going to step and strip the knife out of the way. Now, if I lose him and he's, he's able still to pull out, I can just turn and cut him open here. This technique shows opposite because if he's stepping right, I'm stepping left. Right hand, left hand. He turns counterclockwise, I turn clockwise. If he continues to turn around and get away from me, I cut. Okay? Now that's not the technique, but we're going to do it a little different now. So that's some of the things you want to think about. <clears throat> okay, as I come in, I intercept, strip, circle underneath, take it down. Then from this position here, I can rotate over onto my right knee and do the kill shot. So again, so motion. Okay, there's the intercept, the strip, under, take it down, and there's a kill. Okay. Thank you, Rich. And that's Dance of War. This is probably the um, one of the main modules of the whole system of Flumbachi. If you know this movement, uh, you can do a lot of techniques, and it comes in handy because it, it appears in a lot of techniques where you can make it an ending or a takedown. Okay, on Choctaw, come into Rich. It's a knife technique, and again, I want to get on the inside. So what I have to do to get on the inside, I have to move the knife slightly off to my, my center line and get inside. So. So as he comes in very slowly, I want to parry it away, secure the weapon, and shoot a heel palm to the jaw. Because what that does, it takes the left shoulder and the left hand out of position. Because he's having to process this with a shot here, it turns his complete body away. So then I'm able to snake underneath and do a matador type movement and take him to the ground and secure him out. Let me explain too about the knife and the angle of the knife. If he's going to stab me, he's probably going to pick the center line of my belly button. So the knife is going to come in at an angle, okay? If I was going to go outside, this would be real easy because I just got to move outside. The knife can go where it wants to. But it, b because I want to be on the inside, I have to do, I have to move the knife out of the way and then I have to put myself in, in better position. So now, and I want to step inside. So as the knife comes in, there it is, and there's a heel palm here, stick underneath, and then take him down and lock him out here. Okay, there's I get a wrist lock here. The knife will fall. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> Let's try that one more time. Shoot heel palm. And there's a lock. I can strike here and do a lot of other things here. There are many locks from this down position, but that's the main one. Thank you, Rich. Tecumseh, named after the great Cheyenne war chief uh, of the uh, 1800s. It's a movement against a bull rush. He wants to get his arms around me and take me down. So as he comes in and lowers his, his posture and gets me around the waist, I want to grab him underneath his right armpit, secure him around the right here, and then I just want to take him down. I want to fall to my right and ram his head into the concrete or the dirt or whatever. In this case, we had a nice soft floor. We'll do this very softly because we don't want to hurt him. It's a pretty painful thing. So as he comes in, and there's a lockout right there. I can choke him out by the left forearm underneath the carotid artery. This is a submission hole, and uh, probably not necessary to go down again, but I want to show you what we want to do here. I need to guide him to my left side. I can simply do this by sidestepping just a little bit. Uh, I can also come in and redirect his head to my left side with a parry. So he comes in a little quicker this time. There he is right there. I got him right here. Notice my left arm under here. My right forearm is against his quarter daughter right here. All I got to do is just pick a spot there and just drive and just drop and drive his head right into there. There. And I got him. Thank you, Rich. A movement against a rear bear hug. All right, Rich, uh, let's go with this side over here. Uh, arms free or pinned? Its arms are pinned, I think. So as you grab your rear bear hug, I want to step off to my right and establish a good base as I headbutt him. Bam! Right there. 
then I want to reach over but this headbutt. He loosens the hole here. I'll reach over and grab the right wrist. I'll step away and pull him into an elbow shot to the head right here. Now the camera can see right here. I want to when I do this shot right here. I want to snake underneath and get a lock here and just choke him out. Okay, let's do that real slow again. <clears throat> Incidentally, hold on one second. Incidentally, in this month's issue that came out in the latter part of December, there were four techniques in Inside Kung Fu Magazine against this particular hold. And I read all four of them and neither of them will work. And these, for, these were all from great masters. But what happens is they have a cooperative opponent. Their student or their, their partner allows them to get out of these holes and make them look good. All four of these techniques would not work on the street. I promise you, we have worked these techniques diligently in here. Uh, we've written a lot of techniques against this particular hole, but we've tossed them away because they simply don't work. So uh, we want to test these things to fail to destruction. If they don't work, we kick them out. This one works. Again, the python. Now, I can't move forward. Some of them will have you stepping forward. You can't do that. This guy's got a hold of you. Some of them will take the base out from underneath you, so you have to act very quickly. I can't step back because he's there. The only way I can move is laterally. So I can only move one way, either to the, my right or to my left, depending on where I want to go. In this case, I'll step off and settle my base and do the headbutt back here and strike. Yeah, that, that gets him loose. Notice the hands are free. Step away, elbow shot. And there's the lock. I can re I can re retain this hole if I like, and just I might be able to choke him out with one hand here. But he's got his left hand free, so I want to get a, a good grip right here. Now I've got my wrist here. All I have to do is pull up, and I can actually take him down. This is actually similar to, to the um, the Tecumseh. If I want to change my grip real fast and go here, I can take him down to the to the Tecumseh and just drive his head into the concrete or choke him out standing up. And that is the Python. Atoka, very interesting name. Atoka is a small town in southeastern Oklahoma, about 30 miles north of Durant. And uh, I knew it was a Choctaw word, but I couldn't find the actual meaning because it's not pronounced like it used to be. It was called Hait, Haitoki, Haitoki. So you can imagine if you took the word and put maybe 10 or 15 people in line and said Haitoki and pass it down, how this word might be in, interpreted down the line as a toka, a toka. A, a toka was a, was a great war chief, he was a captain. And he settled in the southeastern era of a toka. And a toka also means, is a Choctaw word that means ball ground. So he was, not only was a great war chief, but he was also a great ball player. And that's where he got the name, Haitoki, or that's the correct pronunciation, but it's called Atoka. A, Atoka now. And so with that in mind, I did this. I already had the technique built, but I just want to assign a name to it. So as he throws a right punch in my head, I'm going to feed it to my right hand, which is my catcher's mitt. So I'm not playing ball. Here's a ball coming in right here. So I'm going to feed it to my catcher's mitt. Bam, catch it. Now, I used to do this. I used to think that I could so strong-handed when I was a little tougher, a little stronger, that I could just simply throw this ball back at him and take him down. And I can do a certain degree, but now I'm older, I want to be a little bit more efficient. So now what I do is this, I, I put in the, uh, the same thing, I catch it with my man, snake over and get me a four corner lock. Now, instead of throwing the ball, I'll throw the elbow, much more powerful and take him down. Now I have a lock down here. All I have to do now is pull straight up. And I got an extremely painful lock when I pull up. And that's called the Atoka. One more time real slowly. Let's take it from this angle over here, Mr. Rich. Slow motion, I'm gonna feed the to my catcher's mess, snake underneath, grab my my right wrist with my left hand. I call it a medicine wheel or four corner lock. And I can just simply throw the elbow from here and let him fall. Or if I want to put more torque on it, I can step back with my left leg. And there's a lock here. Okay. All right. Thank you, Rich. Born in Woods, 
seemed the wrong time and place. I grew angry when others trashed my race, searching for identity and friends who cared. I envisioned a native warrior, tall bear.